Hello and welcome to a video review of the PC version of the Dehancer film for Lightroom Classic software. This video is proudly sponsored by Dehancer, a group of software engineers that specialise in the development of plugins and editing programmes that will assist in the video and film production projects in various multimedia software packages such as Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve. Underneath settings, updates for the film profiles menu can be downloaded with the relevant button here. Depending on the GPU of your device, you may wish to enable a faster preview for image files of a large size. Before commencing a new project in this Lightroom software, ensure that you have a backup copy of the relevant image files that you wish to apply changes to. This is because the Lightroom software overwrites raw image files that you utilize in projects in this particular software. Right click on the image that you wish to edit, select open with and choose another app if you do not see the Dehancer Lightroom software available in the options. Select the relevant software and click OK. Once the relevant image file is open in the software, the end user is provided with a variety of color, chrome and green filters which can be applied to the image using the film type and profile options in the top left corner. Reset, undo and redo options are available just above these. The amount of exposure in the image can be controlled by the push-pull option underneath. Should there be any particular film profiles that the end user wishes to refer to in later projects in the software, these can be selected from the relevant menu and bookmarked as a favourite by using the heart icon towards the top left corner enabling a quick identification of the favourite profiles in subsequent uses of this software. Select again to remove as a listed favourite. Throughout the user interface there are various tick boxes available, enabling the end user to make quick comparisons between the original and edited photos. A mouse scroll button will enable the end user to zoom in and out by scrolling up and down respectively, and also clicking and dragging to a particular point of focus on their file. Click the zoom to fit icon to reset. On the right hand side of this software, we are presented with a variety of tools that can be used to make adjustments to our photos. As you make changes to the values for your image properties, ensure that the relevant property group tick box is selected. Increasing the temperature comp setting applies an intense heat effect to your photo Whilst decreasing this value applies a light blue filter to your photo. Increasing the tint comp applies a purple effect to your photo, whilst decreasing this will apply the colour green. Increasing the defringe values should help remove any colour spillages that are normally visible through close-up shots of two contrasting props set next to one another, particularly those with contrasts in brightness. Increasing the black point value will strengthen the black and shadowy areas of your photo, whilst decreasing the white points will intensify the brighter areas of your image. Selecting Luma as the colour mode will apply a minor grayscale type effect to your photo. Additional film profiles can be selected underneath the print menu, similar to what we saw earlier in this tutorial. Reductions in target white and exposure for example here can help to reduce the intensity of your photos, which can be handy when removing glare from sun reflections for example. Increasing tonal contrast intensifies the colour shade making each of the props stand out more, although this may make it difficult to distinguish parts of your image that have colours that closely resemble plain white or black, such as the rocks here in the lake. Increasing the colour density adds more vibrancy to your colour shades in the image once more, whilst reducing this will result in a gentle greying effect being applied to your photo. And to apply a grayscale to your photo, reduce the saturation value. If you feel that the darker sections of your photo are too insignificant, the analog option provides the user with the opportunity to add some light shade on top of these to make this darker content stand out more to the viewer, such as the darker sides of the trees here in this photo. To add a classic feel to your photos, the film grain option is also available in the software, which could be handy if the end user has already applied a grayscale effect to their photos. The size and the quantity of the grain can be determined by the first two settings here. If you feel that there is too much of a blur when you add grain to your photo, you can also increase the value by resolution, although this may result in a posterized style effect being applied, 
there should be more clarity added to your photo. Should you want the grains to be more significant on the darker areas of your photo, increase the value underneath shadows. Midtones will apply a similar effect to the content of your photo that don't fall into the dark and light categories, whilst the grains on the more brighter areas can stand out when the value for highlights is increased, such as the effect we see on the rocks by the lake here, whilst the colour setting in most photos will only make minor adjustments to the positioning of the grains on your photo. Changing the negative setting of your image to positive reduces the impact of the grain effect added to the image and results in more of a blur effect being added to your picture. There is a slight crease in exposure of the brighter sides of your image when the mode setting is switched to digital. Vibrancy of particular colour shades can be adjusted underneath the colour head options. Should you wish to move all three simultaneously, the gang box can be ticked and the location of all three cursors can be adjusted by clicking and dragging one of them. Reducing the value for preserve exposure adds a brightness to the colour shade which you have applied to your photo, whilst reducing the impact value sees a decrease in the strength of the colour shade that you wish to apply to your photo. The halation settings enable the end user to apply outlines to the props and settings that feature in the image. If we tick mask mode here, Having a low value set for source limiter allows more subject outlines to be identified from your photo. Further outlines can be detected with an increase in background gain, enabling the more lighter content of your photo to be detected by the software. The outlines can be blended with surroundings more by increasing the smoothness value and increasing local diffusion and a bright outline to the detected content from this mask mode. Global diffusion on the other hand adds a glowing effect to the entire photo. The intensity of the outline can be further enhanced by increasing the amplify value. Increasing the hue value adds more of a yellow tone to the outline, whilst decreasing this adds more red. With the mask mode off, decreasing blue comp adds a very gentle blue tone to the lighter areas of your photo. And like in the color head options, the value for impact determines the strength of the overall halation effect. A mask mode can also be applied to the bloom settings, with the brighter areas of your photo being detected with an increase in the highlights value. Reducing the source limiter, again like with halation, enables further outlines to be detected on your photo by the software, and further sections of your photo, such as the trees on the outlines here, can be detected by increasing the value for details. With the mask mode off, Increasing the diffusion value adds a very gentle glow to the edges of the props and settings in your photo. To create a more surreal and heavenly look, the value for amplify can also be increased here. Reducing the save lights value intensifies the brighter areas of your photo. And reducing saturation here, whilst it doesn't go to grayscale mode, even if we reduce this to zero, this can help to reduce the colour intensity slightly whilst the overall bloom effect can be controlled by adjusting the impact value. And the final tool in the menu, Vignette, enables a dark outline to be applied to your photo. Further exposure settings can be applied to the brighter areas of your photo whilst you are creating this. Reducing the aspect ratio will create an open eyelid effect frame around your photo. A reduction in the feather value will make this vignette less blurry and reduce the size value to wrap the vignette around your photo more, making the darker border stand out. Increasing the exposure level to 2 will apply an almost inverted effect to your vignette. Should you wish to save the settings that you have applied so that you can use these for future projects in the Lightroom software, simply go to Presets and click on the Add button to save all of the settings that you have applied in your open project. Click Add Preset once you're done naming the preset. And this preset option can be applied to photos that you open up in the software in future projects. Simply select the preset from the menu and you can see all the relevant settings instantly applied, which makes for a super efficient way of getting multiple projects completed in this software. Presets can also be imported and exported and also removed from this menu. Once you are satisfied with the settings that you have applied, Simply click on OK and your image is transformed. For a discounted purchase on this Lightroom software, 
please use the links available in this video description box. Thanks for watching.